All right, the floor is yours. All right, well, thank you all for being here. Um, so I guess I'm uh, going to talk about dudism, uh, but just a note about myself in case you didn't read my bio. Uh, I'm actually also a Zen teacher. Um, and one of the great things about dudism or the church of the Latter-day Dude, the world's slowest growing religion, is that it's kind of many things to many people. In a lot of ways, it can be whatever you make of it. Um, however, there was a gentleman who founded it, for lack of a better word, um, and he largely based it on Taoism, um, which works for me very well because Zen Buddhism is essentially, you know, Indian Buddhism and Taoism met up in China and had a few drinks and had a baby a few weeks later. Um, and uh, so uh, if you know anything about Taoism, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. Um, I, uh, my talk today uh, in the description was uh, supposed to be about the characters and, and how they get to the true self. And that's kind of tangentially going to be what I end up talking about. But um, I, I got all these books here to kind of get ideas from. And I took a bunch of notes, put everything out. Uh, and then in the middle of the night last night, as I was working on writing out what I was going to say, I, I realized that my thinking about this had become much too uptight, man. Uh, in the parlance of our times. Um, so I, I'm, I do have a few notes I'm going to go off of, but I'm mostly winging it, so bear with me, because by winging it is also how we're taught to give Dharma speeches in the Zen school that I'm in. So my teacher would actually be kind of annoyed that I have any notes at all. Um, because in its essence, it's about being in the moment, right here, right now, with nothing added, nothing taken away. So, you know, I could plan and plan and plan for weeks and come up with an idea of what my talk is going to be today or what's going to be needed to be talked about today. But when I get to today, what's needed today is what's needed, not my idea of what's needed. But what am I blathering on about? Well, I am going to check my notes here and see what I'm blathering on about because in the words of the stranger, the narrator of the story, I kind of lost my train of thought there. So at the beginning of The Big Lebowski, the big takeaway is that the stranger says, sometimes there's a man, and he is the man for his time and place. And that is essentially what uh, you're trying to be when you practice Zen, when you practice Taoism, when you practice meditation. It's about being in the moment. It's about being in your time and place, the right man for the right moment, or the right woman for the right woman moment depending on what you are um in dudism everybody is just a dude it's not man it's not woman it's just dude uh, because the dude abides which is kind of the center of all of this and i want to read one very brief passage from the Tao Te Ching um which if you're interested in dudism i'd read that but there's also the Dude De Ching, written by the Dude, Dudley Lama, available on Amazon. And it's the Tao Te Ching, but um, written all in reference to the Big Lebowski. It's a great book. I love it. Um, but I wanted to make sure I got it uh, correct. So this is uh, verse 38 of the Tao Te Ching. And it says, okay, and this is the, the second paragraph of it the master or the sage does nothing yet he leaves nothing undone the ordinary man is always doing things yet many more are left to be done and i had actually always heard a briefer version of that that just says doing nothing nothing is left undone so what does that mean does that mean just sitting back and literally doing nothing no it means following your situation it means correct function situation and relationship right so in the Big Lebowski, the dude, things happen to him, essentially. He is not the driver of the action. Um, he, is, he is the sage. He is the Zen master, at least eventually. Um, so I had this, you know, my big idea for the original talk was talking about how Walter uh, is our ordinary mind. And the dude is kind of our image of the Zen master. But Donnie 
uh, is really the one, even though he's always being told he's out of his element, is the sage uh, because Donnie, Donnie really does do nothing. He's just kind of there. He bowls. Donnie bowls. He throws rocks and uh, is kind of separate from the action, you know? Um, and he is actually one version of the sage. The problem is the sage is never what we think it is. Enlightenment is never what we think it is. A Zen master is never what we think they are, right? That state can't be grasped by mind. It just is. Um, and that's kind of, of where I ended up in the mindset of nobody in this movie, even though the dude represents the sage, nobody in this movie is the sage. The movie itself is the sage. It's the hole in the center of the wheel, right? Because there's all these spokes that come off a wheel and they move in harmony. But without that hole in the center, those spokes have nothing to do. The wheel has nothing to do. The wheel can't move. You can't put an axle through it and make your car roll. So that's what, what dudism is about. It's about being that whole. It's about letting things roll around you. And it's important in order to be that whole, to be in that spot, to keep the mind limber. The dude does it with a strict drug regimen, um, which is fine, I suppose, but to be truly limber, practice is the way, meditation's the way, don't fool yourself. Um, I always used to say drugs are a window, practice is the door, right? You can not you can climb through a window, but you're more likely to get hurt. Um, so, sorry again, I'm not used to uh, checking notes. So. Tried to be more prepared for this and I feel like I'm less prepared, which kind of folds into the whole idea. <laughs> um, so to keep the mind limber, we have to not attach to ideas. And that's what the dude does, right? Because he's presented where a situation is presented to him. Bunny Lebowski has been kidnapped, right? And he has to, to hand off the money and be a part of that. Um, and he, he doesn't attach the idea that Bunny has been kidnapped. He actually thinks that maybe she hasn't been kidnapped and kidnapped herself, right? But he kind of holds both ideas at the same time. Because when Walter throws out the whites uh, as a ringer, the dude gets upset. And he says, you know, they're going to kill that poor woman. They're going to kill that poor woman. And Walter reminds him, you said she didn't kidnap herself. And he says... I said she might have kidnapped herself. So really it's both situations at once, right? It's kind of Schrodinger's kidnapping victim. She's been kidnapped and she hasn't been kidnapped. The dude is just trying to roll with the situation. And I will always say that Walter does represent the ordinary mind no matter what, because Walter's the one who always gets carried away with everything, right? He is the one who says, this is not nom, there are rules. Whereas the dude doesn't have rules. The dude by the end, at the very least, abides. And through the majority of it, he attempts to abide. He thinks he abides, for sure. Um, so the dude follows his situation. He reflects like a clear mirror, which is kind of why I thought maybe Donnie was the sage in this story originally, because Donnie just kind of bounces back whatever anyone says to him at any, any given time because he's not involved in the situation. Um, which kind of brings me to, to, I wanted to talk about the circle of Zen, the Zen compass that we use in the, in the Zen school I'm in. Um, because thinking of this is actually, these were the new things that were brought to light that kind of limbered up my thinking about this whole situation. Um, the movie is the circle of Zen because the circle of Zen at the zero point right? It's a, it's a, you know, a compass. We look at the degrees at zero degrees. We're Walter. That's our small eye, me, my eye, right? I'm very concerned about this is the way it's done. This is not nom. There are rules. You're over the line market zero dude. Right. And as we start to practice, we come to the 90 degree point, right? Which is a certain type of awakening, a certain type of enlightenment, so to speak. Although, 
don't get wrapped up in words like enlightenment. Because once you say you've got enlightenment, you have no enlightenment. It's just an experience as it is, right? So that's the dude at the beginning of the movie. Yes, he's following the situation, but he is still an eye, right? He still has ideas. The 90 degree point is form equals emptiness and emptiness equals form. And that's where the idea of Bunny kidnapped herself, but maybe Bunny didn't kidnap herself. Either way, it works out the same, right? You still have to act the same in the situation. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. There's no difference between whether she kidnapped herself or whether she did not kidnap herself. And then we get to the 180 point, which is another awakening point, right? When you get to the 180 point, you have been enlightened to emptiness. There is no form. There is no emptiness. Okay. So at that point, you're dying. You literally just follow the situation, but you're completely separate from it. You're not attached to anything. You're just throwing rocks. You know, you're out there, you're bowling, you're throwing rocks. You're lost in that moment alone. Right. So it doesn't matter if the dude's rug got stolen. It doesn't matter if Wu peed on the rug. It doesn't matter if the Chinaman is the issue or not. Chinaman, by the way, is not the preferred nomenclature. Asian American, please. Um, but at that point, you're attached to emptiness, right? So attached to emptiness is not true emptiness because you have this idea of what it would be, right? And that's Donnie coming in and hearing the word Lenin saying, I am the walrus, I am the walrus, when they're talking about Vladimir Lenin. They're not talking about John, right? It's, it's an empty place. It's, it's drifting in and out as well. All right. And then at the 270 point on the Zen circle, that's the point of magic, right? In, in the parlance of my school. At that point, you hit the big Lebowski, Mr. Jeffrey Lebowski. Right? He has modeled reality, molded reality into his own vision. He has set himself up looking like this great leader, this great man, this rich man, this, this man with influence, this man who has a briefcase full of $1 million. But really, he stole the million dollars. There's a phone book in that briefcase, right? We're trading a ringer for a ringer. This world is not real. The 270 point is completely unreal. And while it is a certain achievement, to be able to use your mind so well that you can create your reality, that's not reality. That's never gonna be just this point, right? So that's actually a bad place to get stuck even though it's past attachment to emptiness. And then you get back to 360. And at 360, you're the dude again. Bunny has been found. We've you know, we, we've pointed out that the big Lebowski was just throwing out a ringer for a ringer. We've pointed out, you know, we've discovered he's just a gold bricker and the dude just abides. You know, Donnie, unfortunately, Donnie has passed away at this point. But Donnie, Donnie has become a catharsis. Donnie has made you realize you are that zero point true self, right? You and that are not separate. So what do you do now, right? You go back to the bowling alley and you bowl. F it, dude. Let's roll. Right? The plane has crashed into the mountain. Everything is a travesty with you, Walter. But it doesn't matter because we've still got bowling. Right? Let's go back, have ourselves a Caucasian, maybe a few oat sodas, and let's just roll. And uh, that, that brings you back. But uh, everything's exactly the same. But at the same time, everything's different. Your relationship has completely changed because you really have become the clear mirror. You reflect back the world as it comes, right? Bowling ball comes, bowling ball appears, right? Red comes, red appears, green comes, green appears. You're not caught up in whether or not they're gonna kill that poor woman or if she kidnapped herself, right? You're not gonna worry about if I can get you a toe by three o'clock this afternoon, right? A toe comes, a toe appears. Whose toe is it doesn't matter. Only go forward, only go straight, only respond to this situation, this moment right here, right now. Don't attach to your ideas about it. Just do what is necessary right now. And I mean, there are other little points too where I can reflect that in the movie. 
So it all comes back to the same point. The point is, don't look, you can make plans. We all need to make plans. We have a world that we need to exist in, right? We have to get by. We can't live in the absolute. We can't live in the no form, no emptiness point. Otherwise, we're just Donnie drifting in and out at will, but not actually connected to anything, not actually a part of this world, right? And then nothing gets done. That's doing nothing, nothing gets done, as opposed to doing nothing, nothing is left undone. But when reality doesn't match your plans, when reality doesn't match your idea of the way things should be, right? When Smokey puts his toe over the line, don't worry about whether or not Smokey's toe was over the line. Just mark it an eight if Smokey knocked an eight, right? If Smokey rolled an eight. Don't pull out your piece on the bowling alley. Don't try and mold things into your idea of it. Let it be, adjust, react, adjust, move on, take that next step. Because wherever you are on that certain Zen circle, one more step is necessary, no matter what. Whether you're at zero point, 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Still one more step is necessary because what do you do? You know, like, uh, I'm just going to close out with this one. It's not quite a call on, but it's similar to, or an explanation of one, right? If I've got a watermelon, I can, I can explain to you a watermelon many, many different ways. And this isn't from the movie. This is something I learned in my Zen school. I can explain, explain a watermelon many different ways. I can say, oh, well, you take the seed and you plant it, then the vine grows, and then you get this fruit, you know, and, and that's, that's the watermelon. Or I can say, oh, okay, a watermelon is this, this kind of oblong green thing. It's got some white stripes on it. You cut it open, it's red inside. There's seeds inside. Um, you know, there's a, there's a white rind and, and it's something you eat and it's a fruit and it's delicious, right? And that's a watermelon, right? And if I tell you these things, you're, that's, Okay, that gives you an idea of a watermelon, right? But is that a one to no watermelon? Eat the watermelon, and that's it, right? And that's abiding. That's being here, being now. Don't worry about explaining it. Don't second guess it. Just follow your situation. Only go straight. And that, uh, in a nutshell, even though it was a bit long and rambling and I may have lost my train of thought a few times and had a lot of ins and outs and what have yous, a lot of threads in old duder's mind. Um, I think still cuts to the general core of what I'm trying to say, the core of what Dudism, Taoism, Zen Buddhism all want to get at. We just want to abide. You want to be, as they say in Taoism, the sage. You want to be the dude who abides. You want to be, as they say in Zen, the true man of no rank. And that just means not attaching to thinking mind, not attaching to idea. What is this situation? What is abiding? And I think anything else I say is going to be repeating myself. So I'm going to end the top there and open it up to questions. Again, I apologize if I rambled a little, but ask me some questions and I'll clear up any of the rambling. Thank you. I'm getting ready to unmute everyone and I want to just do a quick reminder that this is both being recorded and streamed live on Facebook to um, Stephen's group. So feel free to ask questions and make comments, but also bear in mind that this is, it isn't just us here. Hmm. Yes, my question. Everyone's unmuted or you can, un some folks are still muted, but I think you have to unmute yourselves at, at that point. Can you give me just one moment because I want to pull up my group on Facebook to see just to see if anybody tuned in and has any questions there as well. Sure. Um, through the stream. Hello. Anybody tuned in and has any oh, questions hey, there? Let's turn well. the volume down sure. on that because there's a lag. <laughs> okay. So there's at least one person there. All right, the floor is yours. Yeah, and, and that, will, um, that will save to your group, I believe, so that people can actually watch that later. So that's, yeah. that's cool. Um, I mean, I know that everybody's probably, the people who have not seen the movie at this point are like, who is he talking about? What, <laughs> what is this? I don't understand what a bunny is, and I don't understand what a Walter is. <laughs> 
but um, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to um, start off with a, a very brief explanation of, of one person that you just barely touched on and a question, the stranger. That, that is like, strange, that is my favorite person in the movie no you know no offense to the dude i'm i'm sure the dude doesn't care but the the stranger is the narrator and he's played by who sam elliott sam elliott he does a great job and um basically his role in the movie is, is he's this kind of mysterious character who just sort of pops in at the bar um at the bowling alley and talks to the dude throughout the movie a couple of times and says things that are very mysterious and all-knowing and it's like who is the stranger is the stranger like this person from the is is the stranger the dude from the future or is the stranger god or you know or what have you um i that's like my favorite element of the movie and to me the relationship between the stranger who's like this wise, all-knowing, mysterious person, and the dude who's like, who the hell are you, man? What, what do you want, what do you want from me? You know, <laughs> is, is just one of the more fascinating aspects of it. Do you have anything to say about that? Um, I do, I love the stranger too. He's a great character. If I were going to put it into my, you know, cause like I said, even though Judaism is mostly based on Taoism. For me, I turned it more into Zen. Um, in Buddhism, there are the the three jewels. There's Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. So the teacher, the teachings, and the community. So, you know, the the teacher, the Buddha, right? Obviously, is the dude. The Sangha is the bowling team, right? Walter and Nani. And maybe to a greater extent, the bowling league, and just not everybody gets all the teachings, right? Is not directly related. To the film. So what does that leave for the stranger? Stranger is the Dharma. He is the teaching, right? He's, he's the representative that is going to last all time. He's passing the story on down and down. But that's just like my opinion, man. <laughs> these, these are all references to the movie. And I, I wish those, <laughs> I wish folks who hadn't seen it had seen it. So you get it. Um, okay. I know Clyde had something he wanted to say. Give, give us a second, April. Oh, no, I just, uh, <clears throat> I just want to say I have to make a point to uh, watch the entire movie uh, <laughs> twice. I, <clears throat> because uh, after your description, I, it's been a long time that I've even seen parts of. Uh, and uh, the, 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 uh, the different parts that I've seen, uh, is just a naturally likable dude. You can, he, he's just has his essence about him. That, uh, uh, he, he's all natural. Uh, exactly. Yeah. There's nothing, uh, nothing artificial. There's nothing uh, uh, pretend. No pretense about the dude. So, uh, uh, but I, I have to see the whole thing now. Yeah, because exactly. Even when he loses his cool, which he does throughout the movie because everybody gets this image of the dude as being in his calm peaceful relaxed guy all the time you know especially with a name like the dude but there are things there are a lot of things in that movie that tick him off especially walter um and though they really get his goat and he goes off but you know what that's also part of being natural and genuine and authentic sometimes your situation calls for you to be upset you know, um, it's the same in Zen, it's the same in Taoism, it's the same anywhere. Nobody can be calm all the time. The Buddha got upset about things. Jesus got upset about things. You know, he's the big one that everybody's like, oh no, Jesus was, was never angry. He was always kind. What about the story of the money changers in the temple? He started whipping people. He took the time to make a whip and whip people because that's what the situation called for. Not because he was bad, not because he was a mean guy for doing that. Yeah. That's what was needed to get the point across at that moment. So that's what it's about. It's that's exactly what you're saying, Pat. It's about being natural. It's about being genuine. I'm I'm going to try and moderate here a little bit. It's a little hard because I can't see everyone unless I click back and forth. But I, 
I know April had something. And just to let you know, River, I, I muted you because Lucius was kind of talking over others. So if you want, if you want to say something, I could unmute you. It's no problem. April, what did you, what did you have? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Walter. <laughs> You, you mentioned Walter as the ordinary man here. Um, Walter, I found the most disturbing. <laughs> He's certainly on edge, and uh, I had not in any way thought of him as the ordinary man. But I have to admit that in the last couple of months, I have changed my opinion of who the ordinary man is. Mm -hmm. Would you talk a little bit more about Walter as the ordinary man? And can you give sure. can you give a quick, just very brief explanation of the character Walter for those who haven't really? Yeah, seen I think so. Okay, think back to high school and think of that guy that was part of your friend group, but he was still like mean to everybody and kind of would punch them in the shoulder every now and then and you know he'd, he'd be the two for flinching guy in your friend group. Um, Walter is a Vietnam vet whose mind is stuck in Vietnam. He has an ex-wife that he does everything for. His mind is still stuck in the mindset of, of being with this woman who is with another man and on vacation and he is watching her dog <laughs> which has papers apparently. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's that's the thing. I may have said, man, if I did, that was a mistake. Walter is the ordinary mind. Walter is the mind that attaches to ideas, attaches to the way he thinks things should be, right? He's very concerned with what his idea of the rules are. You know, in one of the most famous lines is, which I quoted a couple of times, he says, this is not Nam, there are rules. Because Smokey is one of the other bowlers, um, they're in a bowling league. The finals are coming up. They're in the semis now. And he thinks that Smokey's toe goes over the line just a little bit and gets so upset about this that he pulls his gun on Smokey, which is this other bowler, because of what he thinks the rules are, of what he thinks happened. We never see it. So we don't know if Smokey's toe went over the line at all or not. But that's really beside the point. The point is, Walter's attached to this idea. No, I, your toe went over the line. There are rules. Mark it zero. You were over the line. You know, and he's still caught up in his old marriage. And, you know, he, he, he is a convert to Judaism because he married this woman. He converted just to get married. But now he is caught up in the idea of this is who I am. I, I am Jewish. He was born Polish Catholic. Doesn't really seem to be super religious, though, except that he doesn't do anything on Shabbos, Shomer Shabbos. Um, so he's caught up in this. It's not even about being Jewish, it's about his idea of what Judaism is, right? It's about his idea of what Nam was like. It's about his idea of the rules, and it's this clinging, this attachment, and not being able to let go. When the dude suggests maybe Bunny kidnapped herself, that's it. That's what sticks in his head. Bunny has kidnapped herself. That is not her toe. I could get you a toe if you want a toe. She... Turns out she did kidnap herself. He's right in this situation, but that's not the point of what I'm saying. Um, so that's what I mean when I say he's the ordinary man or the ordinary mind. He is the one who is caught up in attachment. He's the one who doesn't see the here and now. He sees his idea of the here and now and won't let go of that. And um, when you compare him to your new idea of the ordinary man, uh, I try not to get too political, but if you're thinking about the same thing I am, yeah, yeah, they've acted very much like Walter because they're attached to their idea of what freedom is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And ironically, Walter is the dude's best friend. They're like, yeah. they're like best buds, even though. <laughs> right. You know, opposite, opposite attract sometimes. There's some conflict there, man, but you know, they, they're there for each other. Yeah. And oddly enough, they make each other better people too. I don't think the dude could be the dude without Walter. Right. And I don't think that Walter could function in society without the dude. What were you going to say, Detler? That, that um, image you know, when, when they uh, spread the ashes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's, that's hard to get out of your mind. <laughs> but it, it just encapsulates their, their, their relationship so well. 
It does. And you know, that, that, that's the one moment where, you know, the dude does get through to Walter because you can get through to your ordinary mind. That's the whole purpose of the practice, right? Because that's the one time in the whole movie, Walter genuinely says, I'm sorry. And you can tell he means it. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. And he's got no other arguments. He's got nothing else to say except I'm sorry. And he just hugs the dude. And Walter is played by, um, I, I can't remember character names. John Goodman. John Goodman. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he's just the embodiment. <laughs> okay, I'm going to see, I'm going to scroll here and see if anybody else is wanting to say anything. Um, Jean, were you wanting to say anything? Well, I just kind of thought, hmm, maybe this is telling me <laughs> I need to just kind of accept that people, big thing with me here is people will say they will do something and it never happens. And I'm the odd one for thinking, you said it, you do it. If you can't do it, just say so. Um, because that's the way I was brought up. Man's word is his bond, blah, blah, blah. And it really bothers me that it's just the opposite. And I seem to be the only one that thinks, no, that's not the way you should be. And it's like, because I get it. I get it so often. It's like, okay. So I, I don't know. I. I I, I'm not much of a movie fan, but I, I just might get this movie. <laughs> it's, it's like, hmm, yeah, I just might, I just might make myself get this movie, watch it. it it's <laughs> worth checking out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you're saying, you know, it's, it's, and it's, you know, it's okay to be upset with those people too. So don't think I'm saying that. And this is coming from me as, as a Zen teacher more than a Dudas teacher. Although really I find more and more that they're the same thing. But it's okay to be upset at these people. It's okay to to think that they are doing the wrong thing, especially since, I'm sorry, but in my personal opinion, yeah, they, they are. Yeah, so, they're lying. They're liars. There's no explanation. But what do you have control over? Oh, I have, oh, absolutely. I, I accept the fact that I have no control over anything except I will call it a lie. I won't just say that's the way people are. I say, well, they're lying. Yeah, it's so, and it's like I said, it's okay to be upset. The problem comes when we attach to that upset and, you know, decide, well, this person is an awful person because they do this one thing wrong, right? Yep. Oh, you know, no, I don't have a time. Yeah, you for can't. That. Yeah, you can't. You, then, then you're doing the right thing because you just you can't hold on to that upset. You, you can notice it that. and let it go, but don't follow it. Don't chase it because that's yeah. just going to yeah. keep it running around in your mind and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just going to make you feel bad and do nothing to or for that other person. That's when it's time to abide. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a believer in going forward. It's like, okay, fine. That's what you did. And I heard you use that word a few times. It's like, yep, yep. You know, this is what it is. Now we just keep going. I use that word a lot. Bam. That's it. One second, mm -hmm. Clyde. Um, Coach, did you have anything you wanted to ask or add? We're so glad you're here, by the way. <laughs> okay. My only question is, what does the rug symbolize? That ties, their, ties it everything together. Room together man. man. It just really tied the room together. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't fit uh, neatly into my philosophy. I'll be honest. It doesn't fit neatly into my take on it. Um, I think that's, you know, that's the MacGuffin that they needed to have the hero's journey to make the movie a movie. Um, I wish I had a better, more fun answer for you than that. <laughs> Here's my take on it, if you want to hear that. Yeah, please. They, they talk about the, the rug tying everything together. And the rug tying everything together is like so important for the dude that he actually goes and steals a rug to replace it. So for me, that symbolizes our attachment to physical things and, you know, how... Maybe that wasn't the most doodly thing for him to do. <laughs> I'll go with that. I like that. I'm going to use that next time. This will not stand. This aggression will not stand. <laughs> it, it may also be a pretty decent symbol of a genuine transgression. 
uh, where you have this beautiful thing that has been uh, defaced. defaced, and it is a genuine wrong. I mean, by anybody's definition, that would be a wrong, and the dude is upset, appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? At a least lot. not a marmot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Clyde, I saw you. I saw you wanted to say something else. Oh, I, I just wanted to. I thought a little bit about what Gene was talking about on uh, people not following up, doing what they say they're going to do, not keeping promises. And uh, I, I don't think, uh, of course, I uh, I have been guilty of that uh, maybe once or twice, uh, but uh, I don't think it's a to me, it's not a clear case. It's not a black and white thing. I mean, uh, I think you have to look at their motive. If you uh, if you uh, say you're going to do something, uh, but you have a lot of other things in your life and things happen to you as they do to all of us, and it it kind of slips in your list of priorities, and uh, you just don't have time. Or after a while, you uh, you kind of uh, file of the way and uh, someday maybe that's one level but then it's worse if you say and uh, say you're just going to do something just to get somebody off your back you know or just to get through the moment that's you know you're telling a lie you know you're not going to do it uh, now i'm not i am guilty of the first thing of getting kind of busy and not getting things done but that's another step up. Uh, and then the, even beyond that is just the bold face, intentional uh, lie for your own uh, benefit yeah. in the moment. In other words, you just say something, uh, and I can't help but connect this with politics, but you just say something that sounds good in the moment and you think you'll get you'll get likes or you'll, you'll get votes because of that. That's uh, probably the, uh, the worst situation. But I think you, you have to look at the motive. Yeah, I think things falling through the cracks is like the, the, the biggest thing that happens to me. It's like, yeah. you, know, you have, you, you go into something with the right intentions. And I, and I really hate that that saying about, you know, the road to hell is lined with this cave with good intentions because it's like, okay, mm -hmm. not that I believe in heaven or hell, but what's the road to heaven paved with then? <laughs> that also good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, it, I think it's, I think it's okay to have good intentions and you do the best you can and things fall through the cracks and mm -hmm. you know, that's life. But it's, it's also, better. I think that the, the issue arises, though, when you don't acknowledge that. You Thank know, you. you. That's all it is. <laughs> that, that's yeah, all. Cause, yeah, because I, yeah, that's, that, and that's what I got. I didn't think you were saying you, you would be upset with these people if they acknowledge that things, you know, because things do fall the crash. I think everybody Absolutely. understands that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. But, but I, I like what um, Clyde said about he, he tied this to politics. I said, oh, okay, that's my answer. My response now, when somebody says they're going to do something, I will just say, oh, is that a political answer I got? <laughs> <laughs> well, they won't know what I'm talking about, but I'll be able to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, uh, there's a lot of political. Eh? There's national politics, national state, local office politics, interpersonal politics. <laughs> I'm going to unmute River, see if she try to unmute River. Zoom will let me. Hi. Did you have anything else to add, River? I know you're a fan of <coughs> TBL. Of, like I said, I I take a lot of what the um he said to um heart. Uh, I think can uh, embody um basically our connection to um either a deeper self like through enlightenment or a higher us or talk to us and try to help us figure out our path like the narrator and the stranger being the same person he's like this is what happened 
but I'm going to step in every now and again and try to talk to him and see how he feels about what's going on. <laughs> and I feel like the more prepared he felt he felt he was, the less prepared he actually ended up being. <laughs> Sure, because then you're, you're grabbing into attachment. I mean, look, when they were looking for the briefcase, right, he got, after he got his car back, when did he find Larry's homework? It was when he wasn't paying attention. He literally had just crashed. Everything had come to a screeching halt. So he was at a complete standstill. He was not thinking in, for more reasons than one. And it just presented itself. The answer presented itself. When he, trapped, when he stopped trying to look so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then another thing that I, I like, that I enjoy, and I think this ties into the wheel thing, is the idea that basically all the characters in the movie, you know, that we're, we're, they're all parts of us. Yeah. We all have, we all have Donnie, we all have Walter, we all have the dude, <laughs> we all have Bunny, you know? <laughs> and, it, and it's all there all the time, you know, that's, that's it. <laughs> going back to, to the homework that homework was there the whole time right he just had to stop and find it you know all the answers are there you know enlightenment is there all the time there's never any time we're not enlightened we just don't see it because we're either too busy thinking about it or we're too busy thinking about something else we're too busy attached to anything because again like i said once you say this is enlightenment then that's not enlightenment it's just an idea of enlightenment but everything is always there, you know? The sky is blue, the clouds are white, the grass is green. It's all right there. But what is that? You have to slow down and listen. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's, meditation is one path to that. <laughs> yep. Did you have any comments on your um, live stream that you wanted to address? No, and I actually think it closed out because my phone closed itself. I was trying to get back in there. I think it might have shut down. It should still be live streaming at this point, if you can access it. Still live? Claims sure. to be. <laughs> huh. No, it looks like it's still live. There's a little bit of a lag, but it looks like it's still going. Um, doesn't seem like there's any questions or comments, though. Okay. So I think... Then if, if you want, if you, I don't know if you have any final words, but um, if so, after that, then I will stop the recording and the live stream, and then we will um, just basically extinguish the chalice. And well, when I uh, do my teachings in the uh, Lotus and the Apocalypse Meditation Group, I do like to end every week with the four great vows of Zen Buddhism, which I know is not Buddhism, it's supposed to be a Buddhist talk, but if you don't mind, I'd still like to end with the four great vows that we use in my Zen school. Okay. Thank you. Sentient beings are numberless, we vow to save them all. Delusions are endless, we vow to cut through them all. The teachings are infinite, we vow to learn them all. The Buddha way is inconceivable, we vow to attain it. Thank you for having me, this was really fun. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. I'm going Thank you. to stop the live stream first. And I'm going to stop the recording.